Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and really appreciate you guys uh, swinging by checking today's video out. And guys, I'm gonna say that out of, um, I've done like over 3,000 YouTube videos since I started the channel about three years ago. And I'm gonna say that this video right here is probably the, probably the most important video I've ever done in terms of putting out an opinion that I think has a, uh, uh, the potential the biggest impact for the future of fishing down the road here so um i've been wanting to do this video for quite a, quite a long time and i finally decided the time's right for it what i want to do is guys i want to discuss the probable and possible futures of the sport of bass fishing that lie ahead of us here so um and i'll explain what i mean by that here in a second um also guys before we get started i just want to thank everybody out there that has been supporting the channel through uh, subscribing and using the links in the description. I want to give everybody a big thanks to that before I start the video, so much appreciated with that. Okay guys, when you're talking about um, probable and possible futures in, in any situation, it doesn't matter what aspect of life we have, um, there's a lot of different roads or a lot of different paths that can um, change based upon just simple decisions. Say, for example, guys, look at your own life. Just say, say, that, say, for example, the day that you have ahead of you right now. Now, the, the possible future that you have completely lies within the decisions you make. It, it lies within the, you know, which direction you decide to turn if you're driving through traffic in town. One direction may be a safe route for you if you decide to make another turn to avoid traffic. Maybe you'll get in a fender bender or whatever. You know, any decision that you make alters the future in, in some aspect, in some form. Um, that's the, just the way it is. That's sort of one of the mysteries of, of life. And the difference between a probable future and a possible future is a probable future is something that is really likely to occur based upon the current set of situation, the, the current state of reality, the, the, the current state of facts that uh, are before you. And the possible reality <clears throat> are things that uh, could possibly take place based upon different decisions you make. So probable realities are more likely to happen and possible realities are also a, a potential outcome if people make certain decisions out there. So I sort of wanted to clarify that before I get into today's video about the probable and possible futures of bass fishing. So what I want to address right off the bat, I want to address what is my opinion is the probable future of bass fishing that lies ahead of us. And then I want to do sort of a counter to that about what's going to be the possible futures of bass fishing if we make different decisions. Now, the probable future of bass fishing, in my opinion, um, lies within the way things are going right now. And I sort of wanted to explain to you a little bit about that because the probable future of bass fishing, um, the way things are going right now, unless we make some drastic changes, are not good at all. And I don't want this, I'm not trying to make this sound as some negative video because when I get into the possible future of bass fishing, we're gonna get to the other end of it, how, how it can really be a positive thing. But right now, guys, probable future of bass fishing does not look good, and I wanna get into that. First of all, when, uh, when you're looking at the sport of bass fishing down 30, 40, 50 years from now, there's a tremendous amount of mountain-sized obstacles that we have to overcome um, to basically just keep the sport intact as we know it today. The biggest challenge that we're gonna have, or maybe not the biggest, but one of the biggest challenges we're gonna have is water quality issues in terms of pollution. Um, our lakes are more polluted now than they've ever been uh, simply because um, the problem that we have is we have fallen into a rut where we have elected politicians that are in positions of power that tend to um, support policies that undermine any type of environmental regulations and protections. Um, that has been a, a pretty much of a staple. And, and basically, they go back and forth. You'll have a certain party that takes power and they try to institute some type of regulations or safeguards to protect our water quality and air quality, then you'll have another political party that gets into power that wants to deregulate and allow people, companies to pollute at will. Right now, the way the political environment is in this country, and it has been for a while, it tends to protect polluters. That's why right now we have warnings and every single, every single state in the, in the United States has a warning 
as far as mercury contamination against consuming a certain number of fish. We have a lot of different toxins, a lot of different fertilizers, nutrient overload. There's the, the pollution problem is a is is pretty big right now, and we don't we've got some checks on it, but we don't have enough checks. So, water quality issue is going to be a big factor on it. The next thing we have the mountain we have to overcome, guys, is simply loving the sport to death. We've got as the population of this country grows, uh, you know, rapidly, which it is global population as well growing rapidly. All of that puts pressure on the resources. And one of the things about when you're talking about a natural environment, as far as living in balance, um, humans are no different than any other species on this planet. You know, when, when any other species becomes overused or overpopulated, you have, there's some, the, the environment and the ability for the planet to sustain that particular species is strained. And with bass fishing, you know, we get, we have more people using our lakes more and more every year. We have, you know, lakes are not being built, so we've got more people using it and consuming that resource. And as we have more people uh, using that resource and fishing, that has a negative effect upon fishing as well. You know, it's going to get tough. The fish get more educated. It's going to get tougher to catch them. The fish populations are going to go down. That's a direct result of, with overuse. Another problem we have with it, guys, another reason, another probable future fishing has as far as it being in danger is simply too many bass tournaments. Bass, the combination of delayed mortality caused by bass tournaments, at, having tournaments at certain times of the year, and recreational anglers flaying out bass is another huge, has another huge impact on the uh, quality of fishing that we're going to have in the future. So when you take the fact that our water quality is being degraded. The fishing pressure is becoming more and more. There's more tournaments putting in more of a pressure on bass specifically. Those are big negatives that the sport has in front of it. And then you put on top of that the uh, unregulated and exploding electronic technology within the sport that is allowing anglers to catch every dang fish in the lake, there's no place for those fish to hide anymore. Um, that is even putting more pressure on it because the anglers that are out there are more highly skilled than ever. And guys, don't make any mistake about it, not everybody's a catch and release angler. You've got a ton of live scopers that put the knife to a bass, and you've got a ton of live scopers that are probably unintentionally killing tons of bass through delayed mortality from bear trauma from taking those fish out of deep water. So it's just like what Elon Musk says. He, he, Elon Musk, if you've ever listened to him, you know, he's one of the smartest dudes on the planet. And he said the biggest danger to humanity is artificial intelligence, which I equate that to one of the biggest threats for the probable future of fishing is electronic technology that is not being regulated simply because of money. That's the only reason. The only, the only reason that we have forward-facing sonar and fishing is because of the money that the electronic companies give to the tournament organizations that, that do not want to lose that income. That's the only reason we have it. So probable futures of bass fishing guys, in my opinion, the way it's going right now, they do not look good. I'm not trying to be, I'm being realistic. I'm giving you guys an honest viewpoint and you can stick your head in the sand if you want to, but that does not change the facts. I mean, facts are the facts, you know, regardless how you want to color them or, you know, try to deny them, try to deny the reality of that situation. But what I just described to you is the reality of the situation that we're facing. Now, let's talk about the probable, I mean, excuse me, the possible reality. The possible reality we can have for the future of fishing in this country. The possible reality we have can be awesome fishing. It can be better fishing than we've ever had in our life as far as bass fishing if we are willing to make the changes and if we are willing to stop allowing money and power and greed to influence the sport. And this is what has to happen. First of all, guys, we have got to start electing politicians in this country that put environmental sustainability and balance at a forefront over, you know, tax breaks for millionaires or, you know, you know, some type of, uh, you know, lobbying groups, special interests, putting politicians in power that are beholding to certain companies. We have got to start putting politicians in power that protect our air and water quality, that understand science, that understand and have critical thinking skills about we cannot continue to 
put 300 billion tons of CO2 in our atmosphere every year and have no effect from it, or we can't continue to release these sulfur dioxide emissions into our air that create mercury poisoning in our waters. We have got to start electing politicians that are smart, scientifically grounded in reality, have critical thinking skills, and are not influenced by money. That's the number one thing to create a, a safeguard for the environmental aspect of fishing. Uh, second thing we have to do with that, guys, is we have to we, we have to regulate tournaments closer. We can't be allowing tournament permits at will like we do right now. Right now, you know, we've talked about it a lot, guys. The the, the the lake authorities and people in charge. There's it's it's a it's a free for all, man. If they want to have a thousand boats in a tournament on a weekend, they'll they'll allow it. We have got to start tightly regulating how many boats are allowed or how many tournaments are allowed on each lake and permits have got to start being regulated a lot tighter in order to sustain you know the long-term term future of the fisheries out there because make no mistake about it guys tournaments kill fish i'm a tournament angler i contribute to the problem too even though i try to bring light and i try to get these tournament organizations to stop having tournaments on top of spawn stop having him during the early summer when the when the uh, fish are stressed out and you lose a lot of fish there's things that can be done we can tournament organizations can start being more responsible about, responsible about the time of year they have tournaments and if they start doing that you're going to start seeing an incremental improvement in the fishing next thing we have to do guys we got to start building more lakes <clears throat> if we start building more lakes around the country and obviously, we can't, the days of building 40 and 50,000 acre, acre lakes are probably over. But we have the ability to create thousands and thousands of small lakes across the country. We can go into areas that are like dilapidated inner cities that are like crumbling, you know, clear those out, build lakes, you know, and put more, you know, and create more fishing habitat and create more fishing environment for people out there that will help absorb the increase in fishing pressure. The only way that we're going to have sustainable fisheries is if we have more water for people to fish as the populations get bigger. Um, that's the only way that you're going to do it. Other than that, aside from that, it's, it's going to start effect, affecting it negatively. And finally, guys, what we have to do is we have to acknowledge the danger of exploding, electric, ele exploding electronic technologies. It's the same as Elon Musk you know, doesn't deny the reality of the dangers of AI. We've got to do the same thing with electronic technology. And all you dudes out there that are pro forward-facing sonar, uh, you got your heads in the sand. I'm telling you right now because you're, you're basically defending this technology for your own benefit. You're not really thinking about the future when you think about that. But as if we start reining in electronic technology in terms of what the public can use, you're going to see another increase in the quality of fishery. The electronic technology, they can continue to develop it, put it in the hands of the conservation departments, put it in the hands of the fisheries management. Those are the only people that need it. That recreational bass fishing does not need the type of technology that leaves no stone unturned as far as where fish is out there. Because when you do that, when you educate and you give the anglers the tools that allow them to know where every single fish in the lake is, that is not a recipe for long-term sustainability. So if we can do that, guys, if we can, if we can start, um, again, electing politicians that make sure our air and water stays clean, and I don't mean just a token, a token gesture with that, we have to have real, real legislation that basically puts the neck of the polluters on the ground and makes them, make them stop or put them out of business. If we start doing that and we start, you know, regulating the entire tournament industry a little bit further, if we start creating more, you know, habitat for the fish in terms of more water out there, you know, if we start, you know, regulating this electronic technology, you know, where it doesn't get out of hand like it is right now, all of that stuff, if all that stuff comes into play together, guys, the future of bass fishing looks very bright. And right now, but that is a possible future. That is not the probable future out there because problem with people um, wanting to get past the probable future and into the possible future is most people have too many special interests in it. The electronic companies, they're not gonna do it because they're, they're, they don't wanna cut into the profit margins. 
the politicians, they have the ability to uh, start regulating and making sure our air and waters are cleaner, but they don't want to do it. If they're getting subsidized by some company that's a big polluter, but it basically puts them in the positions of power, they're not going to say anything about it. Um, it's all sort of a vicious cycle with that. So it's up to us guys. It's really, we have the choice, you know, the bass anglers in this country, the voters in this country, the citizens of this country, we have a choice of having a probable reality that is unsustainable and will suck for everybody. Or we also have the power to create a possible reality of where it's just freaking awesome. And everybody has a great time fishing and our environment is sustainable for the long term and is in balance. And right now we're not in balance, you know, make no mistake about it. You can sugarcoat it. You can stick your head in the sand about it. You can deny the reality. You can live in an information silo, but that does not change the reality of the situation. So anyway, that's my two cents on it guys. I hope you guys are well. We'll talk later.